So welcome to this episode where we're building a Flutterflow application using Superbase as the back end. We're building a goals tracking app in this series. If you are new to this series, please do check all the links in the description and that will get you right where you need to be. In this particular episode, we're going to make some final tweaks to our application just to bring it up to the standard and consistency that we need um, for the application. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So here we are back in the final application. I just wanted to do some corrections in this particular section on the actual animation that actually appears here. Because actually at the moment, with inside the actual application, we don't actually have any animations that's applied to the actual goal. If I click on here and then go back, you can see that we've got this little slide effect that's happening on the actual goal container. So what's kind of happening is, is we've got the stack that's animating and we've actually got the container on top that's actually animating itself as well. So let's go and add those into the application now. So here we are then back in the widget tree. I'm on the home page. Let's first add the animation to the actual stack. So the actual stack is what is going to contain the whole of our goal. So this is just going to slide the stack down just very, very slightly. OK, so let's select the stack on the left hand side. So if you just choose that with inside the list view, move over to the animations here and we're going to want to do an on page load, hit the add animation and we're going to want to do a slide. Now, what we need to do here is we're going to set the duration to be 200 milliseconds. So really just a fraction of a second there. That should be super fast for us. We're going to put no delay in. So we're going to want it to happen straight away. And then we're going to want to also then move down to the initial position and just put minus five here. OK, so that's going to move this down by five pixels from the position that it starts with. So which is zero and it's minus five. If I just do a little preview here, you can just see it sort of sort of drops down woods when I hit the preview. So that's the overall stack. We now need to animate the actual goals container now with inside. Now with the goals container, we're going to move this down very, very slightly because we want it to then reveal the actual priority uh, of the actual container status is just behind. OK, so just choose goals container, move over to the actual animation, choose add animation. Once again, it's going to be a slide. And this time we're just going to want to choose the actual duration here of 200 once more okay so we know that we've got a 200 but what we're going to do is we're actually going to delay by 200 so we're just going to give it a chance for the stack animation to play out before we actually then play out the actual slide so it's going to look like we've got that little bit of a sliding effect so the stack gets animated first and then 200 milliseconds this particular animation then kicks in for the actual container uh, the actual goals container itself so, of course, we're going to want to do the final position of two. So we're just going to bring this down by sort of two pixels. If I now preview, you might not see it very well here, but you can just see that we've got a bit of a, a two container that, that's being shown. But let's move this now back into the actual uh, test mode and let's try this out and see what it looks like. So here we are then in the test mode. You can see here that actually the our border is looking a little bit thicker than what we need it to. If I just click into one of these and then go back, you can see that we're getting a slide effect, but it's looking a little bit thick. And the reason by, why that is the case is because we've still got some padding on the actual container itself on, on this particular container, which we need to reduce and, and actually remove, set it back to zero. So let's move back to Flutterflow. Let's sort that now. So let's move over to the goals container. Let's move over to the actual properties. And you can see here that I've got a panning of two. So it's just bringing it down just a little bit too far. We don't need that now because we've got the animation that's going to do that for us. OK, so just removing that. Let's go back to the actual test mode. Let's do a quick instant reload. There we go. So we've now got a much, much thinner line now. So if I just click back here, move back. You can see now it just slowly reveals it, which looks um, which looks really, really nice actually inside our UI. But one little correction we now need to make, of course, is that our, our task animation is, is moving in the opposite direction. So just for completeness, let's reverse that animation and let's make this also go down as well. So let's go and quickly do that. So back into the widget tree, let's choose the actual task page itself. Let's click on the actual animation. So we're going to look for it here. We know that we've got the little symbol here. This is an on page. So just choose the actual container itself. Move over to the animations. Let's just press on the little arrow there to just cut it, to remove it out for us. We're now going to want to now swap these over. OK, so we've got the initial position is five, but actually want to bring the initial position to zero. And the final position is going to be five itself. Let's just preview that. 
and you can see here now that we're just sliding down now which will give us the same so let's have a quick look now in the test mode so here we are back in test mode let's choose test goal here i've got a couple of tasks here and as you can see they're just sliding down from the top there it just gives it a little bit more uh, consistency than with the actual other screen itself so that's um pretty well much most of our animations that we need to perfect with inside our application so next up, since recording one of the original videos from many, many episodes ago, we use conditional visibility to display the kind of the, the, the check here and also as well the kind of the strike through of the text. We were doing um, a conditional visibility check on whether the actual task was complete or not. Well, since that time, the Flutterflow team have introduced the conditional builder widget. And I think it's well worth now replacing the conditional visibility with the conditional builder widget in our own application application and of course it'd be well worth you also introducing that into your own applications in the future so let's go back into Flutterflow and let's go and do that now so if you're new to the conditional builder um, widget what the idea of it is that it allows you to show and hide a number of different widgets based on a particular condition or not so in our case on our goals task we know that we have a complete of either true or false and what we need to do is we're going to replace our conditional visibility that we've actually added here to these particular sections here and we're going to actually now group those now into using the conditional builder widget um, which will make it just much much more nicer to use um, and of course the, the great thing about the conditional builder widget is you can have many many different conditions um, and of course in our, our in our application here we've only actually got two or whether something is complete or not but of course if you're trying to check for multiple conditions and you want to display and hide something then the conditional builder widget is a fantastic addition to your toolkit so let's now go and make that change now so as you can see here we've got the row itself we've got the icon complete and not complete and then we've got this other row which um, encapsulates the uh, the either the title that's um, that's not complete um, or the actual text which is complete here so now let's now group these now we're using the conditional builder widget so within the row we're going to keep the row there but what we're going to do is we're going to hit the little plus and we're going to do a search for conditional and just choose the conditional builder widget here and you'll see that it's just been dropped down here so let's just going to move this up to here let's drop that in there so you can see it's the first one in the row now you're not going to visually see too much here but we're going to sort of drag and drop various bits actually into this conditional builder widget from what we've already got here so let's now start off with then the actual conditional builder so we've got this condition here is if something is true then we're going to display some widgets in here if it's not if anything else then we're going to display widgets here we this all i is representing that everything that we do with inside the actual ui now is going to be the um the widgets that we're going to be actually um, edit editing but of course with, it, with the conditional builder selected we can move over to the right hand side here we can actually then click on this little option here where it says show ui builder and it means any widgets that i now apply will actually will be within inside this actual else if i just drop that down here will actually be just here okay so i'm um, just toggle which one that you want on we're going to first start with the first one so just choose show ui builder so the first widget I'm going to add in here will be a row in itself okay so just hit the little plus option here on here and just choose the row so just select the row and then with inside this particular row this condition is going to be um, for everything that is actually going to be complete so in our case it's going to show the little tick and it's going to show the strike through title okay so we need to now grab those widgets and then drag that with into the actual row itself so you can see the icon complete that's quite straightforward let's just drag that into the actual row so there it is and then we also now need to find the text so it's going to be that one there let's now drag that into the row as, as well so just drop that in there and you can see that we've now got those two together and then within the else if we go up to the conditional builder let's choose the show ui builder option here and let's also do the same here as well so let's just uh, choose the row so if i just hit the little here and just choose a row and then inside here the first one we're going to do is drag the uh, the icon into the row so you can see it's down there and then we're going to move also as well the text there 
just just underneath now we can actually now delete this row we're not actually interested in this row so let's let's just 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 delete that out we don't need that for now we'll sort out the um the other details in just a second the icon is the the, the trash can icon has moved over but we'll sort that in just a moment so let's now move up to this first this first condition here so just choose the conditional builder and let's work on this particular condition itself so let's just choose that and you can see here that we know that we're um, actually you need to choose an if condition okay so just choose the condition and we're going to say a single condition so we're going to want to check to say is this actual task complete or not okay so if you just choose this and then actually go down to the task row and then choose and just scroll down to complete we're going to say is equal to and then just move that down here and say specific value and then say true so we know that all the widgets that's going to be displayed um, with inside this block here is going to be of the true condition everything else is just going to be down into this particular row so a little tip for you um, something that I found um, as I've been using um, sort of Flutterflow more and I've been using the conditional builder more it's this 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 here is the first widget that will actually get shown with inside each of those conditions and the habit that I've now started to adopt is I've started to actually name the actual uh, widgets that gets displayed here so I can see at a glance if you're building up lots and lots of these conditions by naming the first widget here it's just easier to see at a glance um, it's kind of um, you know, the actual widget that's going to be displayed and you just simply just need to go over to the row here so I'm just going to just change this to say um, complete row just like that and then down here I'm just going to go down to this particular one here and I'm just going to edit that and I'm going to say not complete row just like that and you can see now if I go back to the conditional builder you can just see at a glance I can see the name of the actual widget that's going to get displayed so it's just just a handy thing to do there so just click on the show UI builder we're going to go now back to the actual complete condition you can see here that we've got a little bit of a, a problem with inside the UI so we just need to put some padding in there as well things are a little bit sort of tight so let's just put an 8 in there let's just move that over and we're going to want to go back to the conditional builder and we're going to want to say show in UI builder this one here and then just down onto this particular um, icon here we just want to do the same thing as well let's just put an 8 on the right padding so that's looking good for us now so the final thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move the actual uh, sort of the trash icon to the right hand side we just simply need to go to this particular row here and we just need to actually just choose this option here space between so just choose that and you'll find that it actually pushes everything across so the space is right in between this here that should be good enough for us so that's pretty well much um, everything that we actually need um, let's there's, there's, oh, there's just one more thing we need to do actually we need to also remove the conditional visibilities that's actually being applied here you can see the little the little eye icon here that's representing all of the individual um, kind of visibility so if you just choose this bit so if I did go to the conditional builder here sorry let me just say show in UI builder let's just choose the first one go to icon complete we can now turn all of these off because we don't need to handle these actually individually so let's just choose those off let's go back to the conditional builder let's say show in UI builder and then we can means we can go down to these ones here and we can also turn those off as well so you can see here it keeps it nice and tidy so there we go so that's the conditional builder really really a fantastic addition um, i really recommend that you use that certainly if you're dealing with lots and lots of different conditions you want to display lots of different widgets depending on certain conditions within inside your application then the conditional builder widget is going to be your friend so let's now fire this up just to make sure that everything is working for us so we are back in test mode let's choose this particular one here you can see that the conditional builder must be working okay in in this situation because you can see here that we've actually got everything that looks like it's being displayed correctly based on the complete condition so um that's perfect let's move on to the next bit so that's it if you've got this far and you've been watching right the way through the series well done that you've come to the end of this particular version of the application of course if you would like me to improve this application if you'd like me to add more features into it please do leave those comments and I will be more than happy to follow up on a future video and of course I've done that on other videos as well on my channel itself please do like this video please do subscribe to my channel if you love learning Flutterflow and of course I'll be covering more super base in the future as well because it is just a fantastic platform for you to build your no code applications on top of it's awesome I love it and there'll be so much more coming in the future please do subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video or the next series thanks for watching